All right, folks, we're back. Thanks for watching that commercial break. Uh, we are just getting into the next series. Another best of three winners bracket finals. Although, in the grand scheme of things, it is the I guess semifinals of the overall tournament. Yep. Tell the stream, Panda Bear Me versus Drunken Boy. Also, just doing another quick check-in since we haven't heard any complaints. I'm assuming that the audio is still all fine and well, and there's not been any hiccups. Hopefully. <laughs> what are we giggling at here? Oh, I see. Just things. You I jerk. Mean... <laughs> no, like at this point in time, I think you convinced people that wasn't even you. I, I, I'm just glad no one soundboarded that. Like we have the Marauders should shoot up forever. Immortalized to the ten dollar donation or twenty dollars. I don't even remember which. Well, you wrote it, so it's not very easy. <laughs> yeah, but then we laughed about it and said it like ten times after. <laughs> we did. I mean, I'm surprised I wasn't an NA cast because we were just feeling. Thought that was so hilarious. <laughs> All right. Uh, real quick before we get into game, let's uh, show off that jersey, huh? Uh, sure. Yeah. <clears throat> it's like a blanket now. It came out looking pretty nice. Yeah, so this one's a little bit big for Zombie Grub because this wasn't originally intended for her, but after the one she got was way, 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 way <laughs> too small. See me trying to put the other one on. <laughs> I still think you good. look like Cobra Commander trying to wear the other one. Yeah, I did. Yeah, looking for team. It looks pretty good. And the shoulder thing came out pretty well, too. It's it's kind of hard to show off the shoulder without wearing it, but it, it, if you saw Bjol with it on uh, GSL, it looks pretty nice. But yeah, Zombie Grub is more like a like a pajama top than a jersey. <laughs> how big it is. Yeah. Maybe, you know, I'll like uh, work out a lot, eat really well, get super skinny, like really, really, really hot. And then I'll do that thing where they like kind of like scrunch it up with like a band around their mid midriff. What? Have you ever seen like it's like a big shirt and what they do is they like take the uh, side of it and like scrunch it up and then wrap it with the bands so that it actually fits them and it shows off their midriff? I know that they'll take it like the bottom of the shirt, tuck it in through the collar and tie it up there. Is that not what you're describing? Tuck it into the collar. I don't think so. I'm going to show you, but I'm not wearing a shirt that's very well Designed for it, and, also, <laughs> and you're nowhere near hot enough. Obviously, as it seems to be I mean, a key I'm thinking of, of literally like K-pop people here. All right, like give me a break. <clears throat> the point is, all right. Well, uh, Proxima Station. As we yeah. get into game one of a brand new best of three, K-pop girls are like unfair hot. You know, there's like the whole unrealistic standards of beauty, blah blah blah, and then there's K-pop girls above that, <laughs> and boys. I, I'm, so They're very me, pretty. I guess it, I I definitely have a much more Western point of view on like what a good looking guy is. And for me, I think a lot of the K-pop guys are like way too effeminate. And so I don't really view them as like, oh, look at that hot slab of meat dancing around in front of my video. Like that. Ho, ho, ho. It's a bit unfair though, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> you're, not, you're, you're not gay. So. <laughs> you're right. I, mean, I have a, you I saying... have a, a little disposition. Dis but the thing is, like, okay, I'm not gay, but I can respect how good Chris Pat sure. Pratt looks. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, that's true. So we know your type. That's what I'm hearing. <laughs> yeah, I got no problem. I I have no shame saying that I think Chris Pratt is an attractive man. You shouldn't. All the Chris's. Your mic has gone poopy. Maybe plug it, unplug it. Anyways, game number one kicks off here in the top right. As I'm goes, Mike abruptly kills the conversation. He is blue. He is Terran. Ladies and gentlemen, it's Drunken Boy. Boo. Boo. In the bottom left is the red Zerg. It is Panda Bear Me. Hey, Mr. Morse Macro, how much for that jersey? So, again, we need to first off find a better manufacturer for it. Our design wasn't the biggest problem. The manufacturer was. That being said, if we can find somebody reliable, we could totally do like a pre-order thing. Like, almost like... Um, I hate to reference it like this, but like a crowdfunding for the shirt, right? Where like, you you give us the money ahead of time and we will definitely order that many jerseys. The problem is to buy in bulk off of these sites, they want you to buy like literally hundreds. And I'm not convinced there's hundreds of people tuning in who want that jersey. Also, yeah. I forgot, I don't know when yet, but the first week of June, we've got it sorted. Where Biel's gonna play a show match against the next member of Team LFT. Team looking for team. 
announcement incoming. Maybe I could give that person the jersey. No, I don't think you <laughs> could. <laughs> you know who it is. I don't think you could. I don't, I don't know. It's, it's uh, yeah. I no, don't know. no, you absolutely. I'm <laughs> you not know, even being mean. I'll, you just could. No, 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 no. I'll give him the small one, right? And just like he puts it on his shirt <laughs> when he sits down, just as like kind of like a onesie almost, like a like a baby, and that'll be good enough. It's all sizes. <laughs> All sizes of one, one boob. Well, he or she may end up using it as a diaper. That's gross. Or bib. I, I meant to say bib. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I was describing. How did you mess up so bad? <laughs> I don't. I don't. I don't have an excuse. I'm not tired. I'm not exhausted. That was just a misplay. I misplayed. My <laughs> macro was no good. <laughs> you know what? Here's I got it. I got it. I connect the dots because I think it would look shitty on them. My brain went to poop. That's diaper. Beyond this, so hard. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, <clears throat> almost as good as worded symbol. <laughs> Thank you, zombie grub. Thank you for letting me live that one down. <laughs> well, Zombie Grub loses it. This is truly become an NA cast. You gonna bust out the whiskey soon? Is that the plan? Oh my god, I'm tearing up a little. <clears throat> oh yeah, I'm down if you are. Nathanius is watching StarCraft with us, boys. Yeah, he's... I, before the stream started today, blessed the rains in Africa, knowing that it would bring the true passion back for Nathanius. So, well, he may have been streaming PUBG, we all know that he came to watch StarCraft. And more importantly, probably yeah. Drunken Boy, and he's probably sitting here like me, crossing his fingers, hoping to see Mech play, even though we know that we probably won't. Yeah, probably not. Feels bad. What was that like? Uh, I just imagine StarCraft saying to Nathaniel to always come back to us, but in like a super haunted voice. <laughs> I, I want to think like Field of Dreams. It was like, if you balance it, he will come. What is the, um, remember that Pokemon episode? It was like the first generation, obviously, it's the one I've ever watched. It was like the first like 20, 30 episodes, and it was like the one about the woman who was like waited for her true love to come back. So she's like seen like standing on the edge of a cliff, and then like her body was like immortalized in stone. I mean, I Did vaguely you... remember, but this is like <laughs> 15 years ago, man. Chat will have my back, whatever she says. <laughs> the super haunted, creepy way. <clears throat> there were some really creepy Pokemon episodes, I'm not thinking about it. Like the uh, psychic one with the daughter. Oh, that was weird. I just know that there's that Porygon one that I never saw, but I heard it got banned because it gave people seizures. And I was like, damn, oh, yeah. Pokemon, you savage. Yeah, I didn't watch the one. I, I really only watched the first 20 or 30 episodes. Some of them. Some of them. All right. Well, we may not be getting mech this game. Feels bad, man. Stimpax near completion. And we did have Banshees open. Last time we saw Drunken Boy do this, I think it was versus Jon Snow. A uh, couple of TVZs today already. My brain's rotted away. But uh, two Banshees were kept alive, more specifically, and able to be used very well later on. I think a lot of Terran players will see these, like, get suicide to get the five or six drone kills. Right. <laughs> yeah. They were they were pretty useful later on. And very, very much so distracting, whereas uh, Drunken Boy didn't have quite the second pyramid of X ready to go. And that's certainly what this build does. He's not going to have much pressure to apply outside of these Banshees for quite some time. But when he gets ramped up, it's uh, it's pretty brutal. Well, Panda Burmese going to have a better time than Jon Snow. Uh, the thing is, too, Panda Burmese and Jon Snow are right, right up there alongside one another. I don't know that I would call either particularly better than the other because it, it, it'll fluctuate, right? Like, one month you're going to be on fire as a player, and the next it could be the worst month of history to the point where you want to quit the game. So I don't know where each of them sit right now, and I'm not trying to compare them, but I would say for Drunken Boy, it's like you're fighting 9 out of 10s on the Zerg scale both times around. So it's not like he gets to be lazy. He can't be complacent. Yeah, so not quite, quite Chris Pratt. No zombie grub. Really not so. not Chris Pratt. Nor Evans. Okay. Nor Hemsworth. I'm a 10 to 10. Nor Mr. <laughs> Boris Makarov. Hmm. Uh, still doing something with these Banshees, but finally the Overseer finished up and they're pushed off. Fire on the way. You saw Jon Snow used it too. And, I mean, it certainly helped against Jungle Boy's play style, but. 
Not in the second, not in the third game. That's what it was. Not in the third game. Still got steamrolled. That creep spread's pretty good, though. And just missing hey. a little bit of overload coverage on the right. That's what I need. I need to get like an iDub soundbite of him going like, hey, that's pretty good. Have that on my soundboard ready to go. Can someone find a clip of that and link it? Don't get timed out. I'm sorry. I think I just baited people. But someone who can link it, they won't get timed out. Who says that? iDubs. Ah. Uh. I know you don't know a lot of people, but please tell me you know who iDubs is. No. <laughs> nope. I guarantee you've probably seen him in GIFs at some point or another at least. Uh, three overlords are not what you need to kill Metavax. No, they don't help that much. If only they could crash into the Metavax. Oh man, that'd be so cool. You got the overlord doing that's like swaying saunter like back and forth. <laughs> so I'm coming to give you a hug. So they're just giant scourge. I'm not going to drunk. Oh, on the hot scale, I'm a 10, baby. Oh. <laughs> it's almost perfectly timed. 47 is 10 out of 10, baby. Ace W. <laughs> Can we get some Ace Ws in chat, guys? Just flood it with Ace W. Show them that sexy 10 out of 10 face. I'm All right, uh, here's where things are starting to ramp up. I mean, you got three double drops going around here. At some point, Panda Me will mess up. But so far, taking care of one drop with Nunes and Lings. Tied out of position for this one. Had Lings in the main base, but they go and respond to the natural, so I'm not in the main base anymore, and I told you something was gonna go wrong. Ooh, panned over at just the wrong moments. Could have accepted a loss, but that was a lot of green on the ground. That's not so great for Drunken Boy, but still with two other drops up and running. He almost gets the spawning bolt, goes back for it, I like it. That's gonna hurt. John Snow had to deal with this. We'll see if Panda Bear me can. He does start the spawning pull up right away. Not sure this is worth it though. Where John Snow is having trouble getting a lot of creep spread, one part because of the maps. It's gonna be hard to spread uh, on attention to Iyer, but also just, you know, his queens were responding to everything. Pammy does not have the same problem. And, I mean, this is some in insane creep spread. So as long as he doesn't take, like, literal bases worth of damage, losing hatcheries left and right, his presence on the map is always going to be scary. Like, you usually have a certain amount of time as a Terran player to feel safe before you have to bury your widow mines and control your marauders. There's no time to feel safe on this map. Speaking of not feeling safe, natural base under attack in a pretty big way. It's only Lynx here to defend. We'll see if he decides to focus. Ah, oh, he just trade out, I guess, while he unloads in the main. But the medevacs are now being cleaned up, so it really is more about the main army, which is trying to come forward here. And this is usually like the one, two, three, four punch that Jungle Boy has been doing, but this is uh, distracted or delayed a little bit because of all the creep spread. He cleans up so many creep tumors, but there's still a lot, and I think most of the queens are still alive too. Yeah, eight queens. Uh, how many has he lost so far? None. Not a single queen through, whoa, like five or six different instances of drops? Yeah. They all been in the middle of the map spreading creep, not helping. <laughs> I need to see that. <laughs> oh man, you're Our fan. chat is the best looking I've oh, ever seen. Oh god. Oh, this is this is well, one of the dangers. <laughs> Ace W, my face when Bailing's hit all the bio. Yeah, and all the widow mines, like this is Drunken Boy, if he's in position with the Widow Mine spread out and in front with the Marauders sniping things, like he takes such a better fight, but surprised like that. Oh my god. It, yeah, it was gross. Ugh. Uh, he's on top of production. Drunken Boy, I really liked his aggression, and I think all the drops are absolutely fantastic this game, but perhaps in doing so, may have spread himself too thin. I don't know. Regardless, not able to pay attention, not able to be split. Whatever your reasoning for his loss there was, he took such a big hit and it doesn't seem recoverable. I really do feel like the creep spread is something that was only noteworthy in the last series when it was, you know, Dragon Boy already on the other side of the map. This game, it was just insane. And you do give up map control, like, well, creep cleanup anyways, I'll say that much. Creep cleanup when you go for drops like that. Man, that was a lot of creep.
It's a lot of creeps in chat, too. Don't say that about your face. That's me. <laughs> the A-W spam is so good. So good. It's supposed to be a temporary emote. Don't get too attached. I know. Uh, it's one of those things where it might become a not temporary emote. Although apparently right now we can't afford to miss any of the emotes because they take a million years to resubmit new ones. Uh. A million esports years. So, you know, week. What, you know what it is? No, I got it. If you want to describe a long period of time in esports, you say one prize pool payment. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. <laughs> any payment whatsoever. Well, except for Bay Street TVs. We're on time, always. Well, except for with the map test tournament, but that's from Blizzard, not from us, so it doesn't count. Which, I would like to just publicly note, I am aware still hasn't been paid out. But at this point, we have absolutely given Blizzard every single bit of paperwork, physical, and like online copies of everything we would need to get the prize money to the players. We're still waiting on them, so it really is at this point no longer on us and entirely on Blizzard for that. Feels bad, man. Feels corporate. Feels corporate, man. All right, well, we're hopping into game number two. Last time around, he was the dominant player in this matchup, but this time around, he's not looking so good. On his last life here in the winner's bracket, it's going to be the Blue Terran player, Drunken Boy. In the top left, as the Red Zerg, it is Panda Bear Me. I'm just gonna leave the camera broken. Maybe if I cast enough games with it not correcting, somebody from Blizzard will finally tune in to watch and be like, hey, that doesn't look right. Why would anyone watch a North American broadcast? Hug, gag, 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 gag. Well, there's like a thousand people here who would say, shut up, zombie girl, we're enjoying the show. Well, actually, it's probably like 400. The rest are clearly bots. I was gonna say, I mean, chat, it's even the last, you know, same 20 names over and over again. Yeah, what is this mod chat? Guys, if you're a bot in <laughs> chat, please type one. Thank you. Hey. Oh. Whoa. You know, I've been using the Taste Tosis announcer. I way. actually kind of hate it, to be honest. I've, I've grown to really dislike it, it, and I've been using it nonstop for the last two days. I was going to talk about how I don't... I see all the complaints. I understand all of them, and I know why it's very annoying. I don't think it's that bad. <laughs> ah, my ears. God damn it. I need to, so you guys on stream probably just heard that notification. We're like, oh, that was a regular sound, plague sound, just yelling, whatever. No, for me, whatever reason, our notifications are always so much louder in my ear than they are in stream. And I hate that one straight up. <laughs> but uh, first off, Mega Dog, thank you for the bits as he pokes the boss to say, do you think Adept should be able to go thur troops? Go th th Thursday? <laughs> should they be able to go Thursday <laughs> troops? I, I guess. And I said do Thors. Oh no, it's troops. Okay, well I don't know. Uh, and Montune just became the loudest Korean caster. Fifty dollars. I don't know what we did to deserve it, but thank you kindly for the fifty big ones, dude. That will of course still be forwarded over to the Mega Tournament fundraiser, but after this month, that won't be the case anymore, and we'll discuss that later. But for now, fifty dollars is appreciated to fund some awesome StarCraft content. Yeah. I was talking about the Tato's announcer. Yeah, I uh, I don't mind it as much. I re there's some aspects of it re I really like. The GG at the end, for example. Hilarious and awesome and really cool. That hits all the good points. But then there's some lines they say that are not like classic tastosis lines. And it's just, I'm like, okay, you, you're clearly reaching for straws on this. Or some of them are just way too repetitive. But the worst of it for me is just that the fake crowd in the background doesn't make it sound like I'm having my game cast by tastosis. It makes me feel like I've got two and a half men on in the background. <laughs> It's a laugh track. Oh, God. No, I get that. I know, like, that's probably the complaint that I find the least obnoxious for me, I guess, who doesn't find the pack obnoxious. I don't really mind the, the background <clears throat> noise so much, but I, I do understand totally about the, the force jokes, like, especially. It feels like they really played with um, Tasis and Artosis being, like, the, the, the shit, like, the straight man and the joke guy, right? Where Artosis is always like, oh, you mean minerals or something like that? And I'm like, you know, sometimes they play like that on the cast, but I wouldn't actually say that's their dynamic. 
Like, it's not always yeah. Artosis being the smarty, smart fixer guy, and Tasis always being the guy that says, pull my finger. Like, it's actually a different type of, of well, for me, than that. My experience is, Tasis is generally funny, but Artosis makes the jokes, if that makes sense. Like, Tasis will say something that's actually genuinely funny and reactionary to what's going on, but Artosis comes loaded with, like, it's more one-sided than a Mobius strip, right? Like... Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, I'm I, yeah. really sad that that wasn't part of it, personally. But, whatever, to each their own, and if you guys don't know about it, the, the, the Nestor packs are out there, so... <laughs> I do really like the, the Brood War thing, though. Like, back in my day, they mined eight minerals. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I like hearing that. And there's definitely a couple of like, Easter eggs ones that only come in, like, every once in a while. I've only just started experimenting with the other races, too, so who knows what's over there. Oh, you've been playing college, I see. Experimenting. That's totally what I did in college. Well, it's what media leads me to believe. I've never been. <laughs> never been. Well, was it, man? college ain't the keg party experience for everyone. For some people, it's hanging around the same 200 people, half of them weebs, the other half too cool for school, and you just doing whatever. <laughs> Can't wait to go to Daytona Beach for spring break, man. No, I literally lived near the beach in my first year of college in a dorm, and I never did anything. I was such a good student, but I don't think I ever did. Partying for esports, not studying. Uh, partying was for StarCraft. Uh, oh, partying? Yeah. Actually, so if you guys don't know, hard. I might be slowly saving esports. I made a deal with partying when we went to Korea. Basically, if he didn't become a LOL pro in one year like he planned, he has to come back to StarCraft, so... Fingers crossed! Cool. I'm, uh, I'm pretty sure you're gonna win that one. <laughs> <laughs> didn't- I thought we shouted this guy out before. Bob King of 12 Verses just sub with Twitch Prime. I remember talking about his name because it looked like 1v2. He may not have shared it. Uh, ah, well, like, thank I you for sharing. I subbed to like Rotterdam like a month ago, I think, or four weeks ago, I think it was exactly. And today I ch checked back in, and it was like, "You want to share your new sub?" And I was like, "No, that'd be super awkward. <laughs> I haven't been back in four weeks." <laughs> this is why you never went to the beach, dude. <laughs> All right, so double drops in the main look very similar to what we saw at the Drunken Boy before. I uh, think CK Walsh will get to that message in a second, man, because the attacks are commencing. And Hellings come from the south side looking for some drone kills. The Queens don't push them off, nor are they here to defend. So the drop in the main ends up just acting as a big distraction. And the Hellions, oh, well, they try and roast the drones. It's not going to go so well for him, but he almost gets a lot of kills. Like one more shot would have been several more drones dead. Oh. Serious so deja vu, by the way. This is exactly what happened with John Snow on Ascension to I in the exact same position. The drop in the main, the Hellions, and the Nat in the third base. I think. Versus John, so they only got four drones though, so. Oh, damn. What you're saying is Panda Burmese is a better player than John Snow. I heard it. So, uh, nobody. Worst everyone... player. He lost six. John Snow lost four. Right. It's not about more, it's about less. <laughs> <laughs> Golf rules apply. <laughs> God. <clears throat> oh, did you want to shout this out? That's where you were going with it? Oh, uh, right, yeah, CK Walsh. Good freaking guy. I don't know if he's still on vacation or working or whatever the heck it was supposed to be, but it says they suffer Bay Street TV for 19 months and all I got is this text box to write something witty in. That would make a good t shirt. You got our love. I supported yeah, Bay Street TV and all I got was this lousy t shirt. <laughs> that would be a pretty good shirt. Oh, no, it's not enough range to hide in the corner. Well, there isn't. And then Shandeth and L. 32 months. The Netherlands. Ah, yes. I think he could unload on the other huh? side of the spire. Yes, he actually unloaded yes, there. Can. That would have been really good for him. Oh, well. Double drops in the south. Run into Bailing's face first. Oh, my. No. Whoopsie. Whoopsie, oh, poops. Things are looking so hot for Jungle Boy's drops. And once again, we have this problem. Panda Bimmy has already connected all of his bases with creep and is now working in the middle of the map. This takes a long time on a Sushina Iyer. And he's already doing it, so <clears throat> that's that's bad news. Drunken Boy's once again going to be overwhelmed after his drop play stops, which it's already getting close to stopping. What if he's just regular whelmed, though? Like Robin from Teen Titans. You can't just be whelmed. You can definitely be whelmed. That's not a word. I'm gonna look at I hope I hope when you Google it, the Teen Titans scene that I'm talking about actually comes up. <laughs> it 
It is a word. Yeah. You didn't know that. Shut up. What do you think? You'd be overwhelmed and underwhelmed, but there's no whelm. There's no like middle ground to be over or yes, under. Yes, exactly what I thought. I also understand, but I don't regularly understand. Uh, uh, <laughs> oh no, wait, I do. <laughs> you stand all the time. When you're oh, not sitting. My life. <laughs> my life has been a lie all until this point. Ace OMG in chat, guys, if you came to the same revelation. Ace OMG. Uh, what am I going to get tripped here, actually? This is bad. Uh, he tries to borrow them so they don't waste their shots. Actually, I like that a lot. He's also missing out on cleaning up a lot of live tumors in the middle of the map. That's a bit unfortunate. Yeah. Shaves off some lanes. This is super important that Jungle Boy has any path available to do some pressure. I mean, and this is even that convincing of one, to be honest. As he cleans up the, the bottom side, the top side is still being overrun with creep tumors, and he's forced to retreat as well. He saw an attack on the way, I guess. <clears throat> really nicely done. And he does have a his own drop going in here, which Henry did not scout at all. Oh, man, Jungle Boy is like the spawning pool sniper. Absolutely just cucking this. everybody out of Zerglings today. And this position is so good. These things are going to go down. He'll trade out for a lot before he has to pick up and back away. And he's got that main army marching down through the middle of the map. Now, you might want to keep this at home because Panda Bear Me is setting up for an attack. But Panda Bear Me can't do anything but build mutilisks right now. Uh, that is maybe a problem. But he actually has enough creep spread again. Relance has increased. But as well as army threatening a counter that even if he was in trouble, he'd be able to buy that time. Which he's not. Junkin' Boy is playing conservative as well. I think he easily should. Like, this is still a point. <clears throat> where if he is too aggressive, he would be overwhelmed. There wouldn't be much of a follow-up without the spawning pool, but he might still be overwhelmed. And he needs to play a little safe. <laughs> You're never going to be able to say that again and not make me giggle. Fine. <laughs> the uh, Bailings actually end up getting a surprisingly good shot despite the Widowmine contribution, but it looks like the Marines should still be able to cover this. I Mito's mean, not that big of a problem. Uh, certainly annoying to say the least, but he's got some... Oh, Ooh, I didn't realize he burned the Bailings. Nice moves out of Panda Bear Me. There and nicely, nicely done. Uh, Penny Remy seems he has that larva problem from losing the spawning pool, so he tries to use as much as he can with all the larva that he had, but still banking a lot of minerals and gas. But with that creep on his side, he certainly has it in to defend against a 40 army surplus, but he's starting to lose out on that creep. He's starting to get overwhelmed. <laughs> I'm just gonna start. Using it. Yeah. Oh, and then you walk on a creep without any of the why. You need a you need to go find a thesaurus and find another word to source for this. Never. <laughs> Never. Well, the hatchery is slowly going down to four marines. There we go. As I say, it's taking Panda Bear quite a bit of time to respond to this. He'll get the medevac for his troubles too. Just kind of rallying to the south and consolidating his troops. Junker Boy sets up a widow minefield. I guess a uh, nice place to fall back to. At this point, though, that army supply was very, very favoring the Terran. It now has been matched by Panda Bear Me. Yeah. I guess not being able to build Zerglings kind of hurts after a while, huh? Yeah. He has lost his creep spread. Most of it, really. I mean, the top side's still going, but it's it's not going to really affect the game. And those it goes, like, 20 minutes. And he's having a difficult time bringing the creep spread back. So this is a perfect point for Jungle Boy to attack off of. He's also able to defend off of it. Need be, as his planetary is... Uh, directed towards his opponents. Uh, these Marauders are doing a great job soaking the bailing hits, by the way. I yeah. don't know that there's enough Marines to win the game, but he's certainly going to give the Mutalist some trouble if they decide to engage. A couple more bailings roll forward. Some burrowed ones, too, for some perhaps sneaky tactics, but nothing immediate, nothing right now. What am I also looking for? Shots on Lings! Oh, no! Uh, he's got an overseer, so he just dang it, some banelings on them and gets rid of most of them. He's trying to... Baited. Jabated. Yeah. He's trying to actually push Junker Boy all the way back to his third, but it doesn't really work. He just instantly snipes the, his Widowmines. The planetary is such a good fallback point, too. Even though mutas were going to be a problem for it, this stops the links and bailings from so easily running over what few marines are left. Very important that he had this here positionally. Widowmine gets an yeah. okay shot on the mutas. Certainly scary to see. I mean, the muta count really is quite scary. It's been used mostly defensively as he's tried to clean out the drops and wait for the spawning pool to recover. But now that he's got a little bit of time to creep spread and start using the mutas, this is like 20 mutas here in this clump, 25 overall. They will snipe engineering base or bait nice in the Nice. Jungle Boy heavily overstimmed for this too. I think a bailing hit may have gone off as well, but those Marines almost it dead. Did. 
I think there's only one. That's why they didn't die. Yeah. Also, quick note, because this guy has been persistent in asking. I don't know if this is bait or not. But as far as I'm aware, we don't have any beef with the gauntlet. I'm not sure why the question's being asked. Maybe something was said that I'm unaware of. But uh, as far as I know, we got no problems with them oh, and they got no problems Jesus. with us. Okay, four liberators still kill mutas if they're clumped up. So maybe better that he didn't kill that planetary. That was really close. That was. That was like a, a single bar of health away from dying. Yeah. Holly Rice. Oh, Ali Rice. Thank you for the sub. Ten months. Hey. Tell President Barack Obama I said hello. Or ex-president. Excuse you. There was a Condoleezza Rice joke, guys. Ah, I think, well, maybe not most people about it. Yeah, as you say, and he's, and he's not exactly super well-known here. Well, you know, to be honest, I wouldn't remember that name as much if uh, if she wasn't in 30 Rock. So. I Right? <laughs> That and the woman from the that cooking show, the, the brown lady from the... I can't remember her real name, but she's super hot and super old. Oh, Jemima! <laughs> <laughs> Tracy Morgan as Aunt Jemima! <laughs> this honking grandma be tripping! <laughs> uh, so Mutalist, by the way, I guess it's worth noting, unless there are numbers of up... of upwards of 25 they're usually not that big of a deal but he's had like only just now after losing some he's had well over 25 for most of this game in fact 16 more have died on top of what he's had so panda bear me has not exactly been wrong to stay on mutas but it's interesting to see him continue to invest in them they're clearly not quite getting the job done they're starting to get cut down from size and he's even investing a plus two air carapace care appears one second one Oh, more than one second. Everyone get mad at her later for it. Totally deserved. Uh, Banelings run through the middle of the map. Creep's not here, but the Mutalists are just running over everything. The Marines are rushing back, but the Depots need to be lowered. The one time that they're not down. It hurts. He's getting mad at him. Nothing. You took more than one second. I was scolding you. Oh. My mom was worried about me because I was laughing so much. <laughs> not even kidding. She was like, are you okay? <laughs> Never had that happen before. Uh <laughs> Ooh, what wants to kill the liberator? That's so stupid. Mm. Well, the Amutas might be uh, unable to find, well, the oh. main base. They're gonna find the third base. But the point is, they're forcing all these units to be at different locations, forcing them to stim. All the medevacs are dry. This is a game that's really gone in control of Panda Bear Me. It took a long time, and Trunker Boy certainly had a very good mid game. I fear it might have gone well too far. Oh, this link bro is annoying. This command center is actually burning. Oh. Still not going to be fine unless that gets fully repaired. So as this attack commences, these SCVs get picked off. And command center might still go down. But the Marauders are dead. The Marines are running back from what few bailings are left. And the command center ultimately ends up dying. Natural base is getting overrun too. And GG. Ooh, well played. Panda Bear Me will take a 2-0 here in the winner's bracket. And move on to the grand finals of the tournament. Also worth noting that he will have a second best of three in his back pocket as the advantage here in the winner's side. That's good news. He got knocked out by Jon Snow last time, so now not having to, potentially not having to deal with him. That's yeah, who are the players that qualified so far? It was uh, Peely Peely for North America. Uh, uh, Soul for Europe. So we have a Protoss and a yes. Terran. If a Zerg qualifies through, I would not at all be upset. Racial balance yeah. achieved. Uh, but it looks like the bottom side has been moving along pretty swimmingly. It looks like uh, Jon Snow and Future are currently playing. Just messing to see if they started yet. If they didn't, then this works out perfectly because we'll have Jon Snow fight against Future. The winner plays Drunken Boy. The winner plays Panda Bear Me. So three or four best of threes. Couldn't be happier with how fast the bracket's gone tonight. If Darius is in chat, everyone give him a big, I guess, shout out or a heart or something because he's been making sure that the brackets go smooth. Good stuff, Darius. Till then, a break, and we'll be back soon.